Hi guys, welcome back for the second video covering my Tau Empire Ghost Gear. I'll be showing you how I followed up on the Tamiya sprays with some acrylics, ammo by Mig Yemenez to do the, uh, the major black areas as well as some of the details. I then used some enamel washes and then switched back to acrylics again to do the chipping. Let's go! Here's how I want to start the model, a very solid, glossy white. Click the top right for a link on how I did it in a previous video. Next, we're going to go with Ammo by Mig Yemenez Matte Black. Now this is an airbrush ready acrylic paint and it's very easy to work with. Now I'm not going to airbrush it, in fact I'm going to hand brush it and it also works really well for this and I'll show you why. First things first, give it a really good shake. Did you hear that? Uh, these guys are very clever. They put small ball bearings in there, small metal balls, and uh, this was a brand new bottle. When I first started shaking it, the uh, the ball bearing is it's captured in the paint at the bottom. As I start shaking it, you can hear the ball release inside. You'll feel it a little bit too. That's when you know the paint is mixing up properly. Go with a couple of drops here. I'm using a waxed paper palette, uh, so it's just very simple, and uh, it stops the uh, the paint from drying on it. Then selecting a medium sized brush, quickly dip it in the water, that will help protect your bristles. Uh, and then I've just mixed a little bit, just a very much a touch into the, uh, the paint here. It's water soluble, so it works really nicely. And that's it, you're in business. Now applying it to the model is really, really easy. Because the, uh, the paints are already thinned for airbrush and paint use, uh, I'm applying it more as a wash. Uh, if you're used to using some other acrylic paints, uh, they're a lot thicker and they'll go on with a slightly different technique. So you can see I'm a lot uh, looser and faster with this. And because it's over a white base coat, uh, some shading and uh, pre-highlighting occurs naturally. And uh, I found that to be really super useful. I knew I could cheat a little bit and uh, let the paint do some of the work for me. And, uh, you know, we're all about making things easier for ourselves, right? Flipping the model around, and you can see I, uh, I started painting directly from the bottle here. Uh, I, I realized that I didn't really need to be dipping it into water. And you can see some of the properties here. It's both self-shading and self-highlighting for me very nicely. Here I wanted to show you that the, uh, the ammo by Mig Yemenez uh, acrylics, they edge really nicely. See that sharp edge I'm getting in there uh, up against the knee armor? And here we have it. This is one quick pass of uh, ammo by Mig Yemenez matte black on all of the details and areas that I wanted to be black and as a pre-shade for some of the areas I want to paint gray or metallic. Next, let's add an interesting mid-tone with ammo by Mig Yemenez gray 059. Now it's an interesting cool grey and I wanted that because I'm planning to add some warm weathering colours over the top of it and the contrast is, uh, is what can add visual interest to our models. I still call this the base coating stage. Now this is a single layer over the top of black and you can see that the, uh, the opacity and coverage is excellent as is the paint's ability to stay within details and, uh, and keep a fine edge whilst painting round and keeping it neat and tidy. And equally, I found I could then flick over and still get really good coverage on this circular area back here. Here's how we look now. And I'm thinking to myself, I've got one of those really nifty turntables. I should be using that for a bit more of a stable view. Sorry, guys. Now, on to weathering proper. I've gone with US Modern Vehicle Wash from Ammo by Mig Jimenez, And I'm going to be thinning it enamel odorless thinner. This bottle is brand new, so I'm using my wave stirrer. Uh, I wanted to make sure that you get everything from the bottom. Uh, these products work best if they're mixed thoroughly. You can shake it, but I like using one of these stirrers. I mean, you just know it's really done and, and stirred properly, right? A quick clean up and setting up my workspace. And uh, here's one of the things people ask me all the time, you know, should I be buying these products? And, uh, you know, Ammo by Mig Yemenez. Uh, and you know, setting up your workspace, you can see I'm working in a limited area here and they're fast, easy and good. I mean, I'll pay money for that. Fast, easy and good, right? Um, th that makes it worthwhile. Now, coming in for a close up here, you'll see what I mean. These are, a, it's a perfect blend. Now, I went with modern US wash because our, our image of the US military is uh, that they've got a nice uh, uh, high tech look nowadays, right? At least that's my image, and uh, we've also um, seen them in action in recent uh, uh, arid environment uh, uh, theatres of battle. And 
that's the image I was going for with this uh, this Games Workshop Tau Empire uh, Ghost Kill suit. Is that from my understanding of the background story, these guys are a, uh, a desert dwelling uh, uh, race of space seafarers, spacefarers, and um, so I wanted this to um, you know have a high tech clean look, but also give a nod back to its uh, the arid uh, homeworld uh, idea. So this brown warm color is contrasting really nicely with the cool white and the cool gray that I've used so far. Now the wash product, you can see how easy it is. I'm, uh, I'm using my same brush, yep, Uncle Link, one brush, one model, and uh, I'm dotting it in to, uh, to the details. It really is that easy. Uh, pick out all of the details and uh, drop it in. Because of the glossy surface here, that's an important part of your surface preparation, it will allow this mineral spirit based product. It has a low surface tension, much lower than acrylics. So it will flow very nicely into and around detail. And what we're doing here is adding to the, the visual contrast. I mean, the as we put the darker color into the recesses of the model, it's uh, adding a shadow and outlining effect. In Japanese, we call that the sumi ire effect. And uh, it comes from the uh, old days of doing the 2D artworks that they're known for. I'm going for a, uh, a clean, crisp look for this towel. I want it to be slightly weathered, uh, a little bit dirty, so it's seen use, but not overly weathered and done. So rather than liberally wash the, the entire model uh, with this product, which you could do uh, for a different look, I'm systematically and strategically placing it into details that I'd like to accentuate. And uh, in the future, when I want to do a more heavily model, you could see that uh, we could go with something that would be comparative to the gunk wash that some people uh, use on Gumpla, which is also an effective technique, and you could use this product for that as well. Just like to point out that you can see I'm painting straight out of the bottle. Uh, I didn't need to do anything further with this product. And again, I'd like that in that it helps, uh, it helps me keep my creative flow and processes going. I don't have to mess about getting something ready to then start doing it. It's just uh, mix it, open the bottle, and I'm in action. So I really like that. Good stuff. Here's something different I wanted to point out that I found in my video. The uh, being as it's the top of the model, uh, it's more likely that dirt, grime, dust, etc. will uh, accumulate on the upper facing uh, parts of the model, particularly around the neck here. Uh, it's underneath a flamethrower there, so I wanted it to be a bit heavier. Odalis Thinner here by Ammo by Migemenez. Uh, it, it really is good stuff. doesn't smell. Uh, I've got some Tamiya one as well. It's all right. And I've got some other turpentine, etc. But I hate the smell of that stuff. And, you know, it gives me a, uh, a burnt sensation in the back of the throat if I work with it for too long. So really simply here, I changed brushes. You don't have to. But uh, just in case I needed to rewash the uh, the model, I kept one brush with the uh, the, the, the US modern uh, wash on it, and uh, I'm using this one straight into the thinner. Uh, I keep one bottle. I bought one extra bottle of the uh, Odalis thinner just for this, and um, dipping it back in, it doesn't seem to cross contaminate it too badly, and uh, I'm cleaning up. Like mentioned before, I wanted this to be relatively clean. Uh, if you're going to heavily or even moderately weather a model, you can't do it in too fewer steps, if that makes sense. You need to gradually build it up. Going around the bottom parts, uh, lower facing parts of this model and the rear parts of the model, you'll notice I, I clean up the model less. Uh, I like to leave more of the dirtier look on the back of the model. I imagine these as being fast forward, uh, moving type uh, vehicles, armored fighting suits. So I'd imagine that they'd accumulate more dust on the back and I think it's good to have a number of gradients going on it. So uh, I've got the back looking a little grimier, dustier and slightly more weathered from an environmental uh, point of view, but the front has more uh, ding scratches and uh, uh, bumping into things, uh, that kind of environmental weathering. So a gradient from front to back as well as from top to bottom. With this wash, you can be quite pinpoint uh, just with the two steps here, first putting the wash on, and I've not let it dry for long, say 30 minutes to an hour. Just the working time that it took me to get around this medium sized model, smallish model really, and, uh, and then come back with the odorless thinner. And you can see that uh, you're able to keep it quite pinpoint in places, just with the very simple use of a, uh, of a pointed brush, a you know, medium sized pointed brush. So it's a, it's a useful one. Look there, streaking down. 
when I have excess uh, materials like that, I start some downward streaking processes here. And uh, that, that helps to give the, uh, gives a little bit of reality, uh, motion vectors, and uh, other effects to the model whilst you're doing your, uh, your pinpoint wash. Thanks guys, we're done for today. The, uh, I hope you made it through with me, and next time I'm gonna show you my test run on how I use the, uh, the oil brushes, also by Ammo by Mig Jimenez, and, uh, and how I use them for effects. Don't miss out on that episode. Please click subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, bye.